Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And welcome back to Paradise in the Pines. I'm Phil Wurz, the President and CEO of the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And it is the golf, the, the Country Club of North Carolina Day at Paradise in the Pines. And joining us today, Don Hunter, the Chief Operating Officer of the Country Club of North Carolina, and Jeff Dodson, the Director of Golf at CCNC. Uh, welcome to Paradise in the Pines, guys. Uh, it's an honor to be here. You know, we're just so excited. Well, we're having you here because you're celebrating your 60th anniversary and you've got a big golf tournament coming up. So talk about, you know, 60 years, the anniversary, and uh, what a, what a you know, it's a it's a long time to be around. I didn't get invited to the party. Uh, <laughs> it was, and, and I think they first started looking for for land in 1962, the year I was born, and then opened in in '63. But uh, yeah, what a great history and legacy uh, for CCNC. You know, it's it's an honor to be part of such such a fantastic group of people that uh, view a club as something bigger than themselves. And this weekend we celebrated Birthday Weekend, uh, which annually happens. And it's the largest cocktail party in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, forget uh, Georgia, Florida, yeah. the largest cocktail. If, I love it. Yeah, yeah if you shorted lamb chops last week, <laughs> you lost money uh, because uh, it's just a fantastic celebration. And uh, we have things planned for our members the rest of the year. Uh, but it's uh, it's been amazing for us to reflect on our history and our founders and how CCNC became such a great place in the Sand Hills, and we'll get into your individual backgrounds. I know Don, you've been there for a few years. Jeff, you've been there. Uh, well, I want to say significantly longer, but it, you've you've been there for quite a while. So you've seen some changes over those those sixty years. What's it like to to be one of the uh, longest tenured uh, employees of CCNC? Um, well, you know, it's been uh, it's been a great run for me. I could have never imagined when I first started there in nineteen eighty six that I would still be here. However, what's that? Thirty-six years later. Um, yeah, it's going on thirty-seven. 37 yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, I was uh, there for a couple of years, eighty-six, eighty-seven, and then left for a few years and came back in ninety-one. But the club obviously has grown; it's changed quite a bit. Um, membership has grown by probably a couple hundred during mm -hmm. over that period of time. Many more houses there. The residential community is is much larger than it was back then. Right. Uh, a lot more families, young families especially, is uh, in in my view probably the most significant change to the club's culture uh, and demographics. Uh, but the golf courses, you know, even back then, I mean, the golf courses, Dogwood especially, the original course has been you know well recognized both in the state, in the region, and nationally. And uh, Cardinal, uh, the second course has has over that period of time really continued to grow in reputation, and um, you know it's uh, it's gratifying to see that from my perspective. A lot of our members actually prefer Card Cardinal mm. to Dogwood, which is interesting. They're both spectacularly beautiful, great golf courses, yeah. uh, and well designed as well. Definitely. Talk about each of your backgrounds, uh, Jeff. You've been there. I, I read uh, in doing research for this podcast that you kind of lu lucked into the job, <laughs> and uh, but have a history at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. And right. uh, so, so talk about how how you eventually ended up at CCNC and Don uh, the same thing. Uh, so I graduated from Carolina in '81 and um, <clears throat> moved down here. Actually, lived in Southern Pines with a fellow named Lou Ferguson, mm -hmm. who uh, was the head professional at the resort. Ironically, I started at the resort and Lou started at Pinehurst. And then over the years, we kind of changed places. But I uh, uh, worked at Pinehurst for about five years and um, then had a chance to go to CCNC to work for Buck Adams, who was mm, the yeah. first professional. I was uh, his assistant for a couple of years and left uh, for three years. We were in Myrtle Beach. I was a head pro at the Dunes Club in Myrtle Beach. Oh, wow. Okay. And, uh, you know, then, Great RTJ oh, golf yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific golf course. Great club. And um, then Buck retired uh, in the fall of 1990, and I was in, invited to interview for the job. And, it, you know, I lucked up, honestly. <laughs> and Dennis Nickel uh, yeah. is the head golf professional of the Dunes Club. Dunes, He's been yeah. there for a long time. I'm sure you know Dennis. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Don, you came from, I believe, Naples, Florida, did you not? Or Well, yeah, I was recruited out of Naples. Uh, but Pinehurst has always been my dream location. Mm. Uh, 
being in the golf business, where else would you want to be? But here. right. Uh, but I came up through the business, uh, started with PGA National and Palm Beach Gardens, uh, got recruited by a CCNC member to go to Indiana and uh, spent 14 years working for the Kelly family in a club called Sycamore Hills mm -hmm. and uh, left it at Golf Digest 69 in the top 100. Um, then made it down south, got to Chapel Hill and then uh, got recruited to Naples and and then I got recruited here. So uh, just really proud to be part of this. And I, I had one point in my career worked for Club Corp. So you're working obviously for, for you know, a major golf management company. But CCNC is a standalone, you know, what's it like to work? I mean, you probably are familiar with Club Corp and, and those kind of club uh, management companies. But what is it like to work at a place like CCNC where I guess you have your own canvas there? You can kind of have a little bit more leeway when it comes to your, your members and the golf courses, things like that. You know, I, I think CCNC is different in so many ways, uh, than a club corp type club or, or even your standard country club. And, and a couple of those reasons are most of our members, this is not their first club. This is not the first club they've joined. Many of them have been club presidents at other clubs or treasurers. Mm -hmm. And they, they really are not learning on the job. Right. You know, they know, they know the drill. Uh, they know the bandwidth of the club, which at CCNC is extremely large. Uh, so they kind of get it. And the fact that a third of our membership is broken up into different groups, you know, we've got national members, regional mm -hmm. members, and local members. Um, it adds to the total strength of the club. So to tackle financial things is not always a, a big issue. Um, you know, I, th I think the main strength and Jeff, you might agree, they all get it and they all are like-minded for the most part, mm -hmm. uh, no, I, even though yeah. they come from different parts of the country. Yeah, definitely would agree with that. Um, you know, as Don said, a, a significant percentage of members are either North Carolina or national members and they're attracted to, CCNC by and large because of the golf. Obviously, you know, coming to this area, being in the Sand Hills, uh, there's a lot of attraction to right. that. But I think it's golf initially that uh, that probably in most cases draws that first attention. And as Don said, you know, we're a country club, but we're really a golf club. Golf is kind of the engine that drives it. And um, um, by and large, there's a pretty high golf IQ amongst our members. Mm -hmm. You know, we the ACC championship coming up. We've yeah. had a lot of members who played when they were at one of the ACC schools in that championship. And obviously a lot of USGA participation among our members. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's not a starter club. I put it that way. Well, well, let's talk about the golf. Uh, you've got the, the dogwood course and the Cardinal course, uh, again, both spectacular golf courses. I am, as you are, Jeff, a member of the North Carolina golf panel, and we rate the top 100 golf courses uh, in the state. And I'd share with you before, and somebody, somebody took the list, although I know it off the top of my, my head. Um, and announcing this today, um, because we're recording this on March the 30th, it will post on April 11th. So the poll for 2023 will be out, but we'll tell you that CCNC moved up. The Cardinal Cardinal and Pine Needles, you guys kind of flip-flop every Dogwood. year. So uh, Dogwood, yeah. um, uh, flip-flop every year. So now Dogwood is number three in the state. Pine Needles is now number four. Piner's number two. Perennially number one. Grandfather's number two. And Cardinal moved up from or 17th to 13th. So uh, you guys have two of the top 13 golf courses in the state. But I hear that's that's not enough. You, you're, look, you want more. <laughs> well, you know, our stated goal is to have two courses in the top 10. Uh, so we're, we're three away. We feeling good about our progress. So, so. Uh, while, while we're, while we're talking <laughs> top 10, so we gave you the top four. Number five is Quail Hollow Club in Charlotte, which, you know, has hosted PGA Tour events, uh, the PGA President's Cup, PGA Championship. Uh, Mountaintop Golf and Lake Club and Cashers is number six. Elk River stays at number seven. Old Town Club, which is Wake Forest Home Club, venerable old club. I mean, it 
very deserving to be number eight. They moved up from number 12. Sedgefield, which hosts the Wind, the Wyndham Championship, uh, stays at number nine. And Old North State Club over in New London, kind of in between Charlotte and Greensboro there, uh, stays at number 10. Cape Fear Club, if you want to know, was number 11, stayed at 11. So uh, to, to crack the top 10, I mean, there's a little bit of work to do. But, I mean, we're talking about, you know, a Cardinal course that uh, is, is right up there with those as well. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're really focused on doing the things it would take to, to be a monk, that group. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we, if we never get there, er everything we do to try to get there is better for the club. And so our real, real goal is to do the right things, right. And, uh, and to focus on what makes, what makes a great golf course. And, and Jeff, I think. Ron Kelly is, uh, he's on it every day and the board and the, the club is really focused on future renovations and things like that, which hopefully we'll announce within a year, um, uh, and, and do, do all the right things. Right. Talk about what, you know, your, your superintendent, Ron Kelly, and, you know, the work that it takes to maintain these golf courses, the high quality they are, because that, that is a lot of work. That's a lot of expense as well. Oh, absolutely. It's it's a huge effort to um, you know to maintain a golf course just to a good condition to begin with, but to take it to you know a top level uh, is at least one order of magnitude beyond that. Ron uh, has actually been at CCNC about a year longer than I have. He started in 1990 and uh, uh, you know worked under George Thompson, who was our longtime superintendent. Learned under George. Mm -hmm. uh, George actually was the uh, USGA Green Section Award winner uh, right at the end of his career yeah. um, as uh, as a working superintendent. But um, now Ron's got a great staff. He he knows those two golf courses uh, better than anybody. And uh, you know the you know what Don said. It's it's constant improvement. It's mm -hmm. you know trying to sharpen the knife a little bit sharper every day. And right. that, you know it's as you as you improve, it gets much, much harder to improve. So, you know, it's trying to pay a little more attention to the details that separate a golf course from being in good shape to being in great shape. Right. And being able to do it day in and day out is the biggest challenge. The consistency of it is, is a, a tough task. For sure. You talk about maintaining the golf courses for the members, but I think many people, when you talk about championship golf, you mentioned the USGA and other championships. A lot of people think Pinehurst Resort because they host the U.S. Opens and and their venerable history with the North and South Amateur and Pine Needles with the U.S. Women's Open and and uh, their championships and hosted the Women's Open uh, in 22. But I mean, looking at your history here with you know the, the North Carolina Amateur in 65 and then CCNC was a site in 71, 72 of the U.S. Professional Match Play won by DeWitt Weaver and Jack Nicholas. Uh, 1980 U.S. Amateur won by Hal Sutton. Uh, the Southern Amateur has been hosted there. Ben Crenshaw's won it. Len Matisse, Webb Simpson. You look at the long list of names and the history and the championship history that your club has. How proud of you of that are you? Oh, that's such a big part of our legacy. And, um, you know, I think our members really embrace that. Uh, you know, any at any club, when you have a big event like that, it's disruptive. I was going to say, because, I yeah. mean, I've been a member of a club where we've had events and members are like, what are you doing? Right. You know, the course is closed. I can't play, you know. And, and right. so, but I mean, it, to have members that own that right. is super important. Well, you know, when you look at our membership, you, you see you see a group of people. Who, what are we, 310 handicapped or below? ish uh it's more than that we, wow we were actually having that conversation last night it's uh the last time i did that analysis i think it was about 44 percent of our men had a single digit index how many actually bet on the golf course <laughs> <laughs> can we go there at all <laughs> you know we've had we've had we've had so many of our members actually play in similar championships huh. Yeah, and so for for that group of people, they're giving back to the game, mm -hmm. uh, and they feel like it's their duty to to present a championship golf course, and their members at CCNC because they get to play a championship golf course pretty much every day. Yeah, and so the the politics of championships are different at CCNC, and that's one of the things that that I like most about CCNC is is that it's it's not just about the individual 
golfer, it's, it's, it's about the game of golf and giving back and, championships is just a, a major part of what we do and and our focus is amateur championships because that's mm-hmm. uh when we look at our membership a lot of them have played in in national championships as an amateur yeah exactly and some of the most recent ones the club recently hosted two usga championships doris chen capturing the 2010 us girls junior and nick dunlap of uh, the 2021 us junior amateur i remember being there for that and uh, there were some great matches uh, with Nick Dunlap and 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 some of the others that you've seen on TV that you know they, they played in the U.S. Amateur and and other tournaments. I mean, they're they're pretty amazing players. And on that skill level, to see it in person, it, it's really cool to see. And it's great that you guys hosted that. Yeah, it's it's an amazing. And it you know when we do these things, like Nick has reached out to the club. I and I think he's playing in the North South this year, and he'll be he won uh, uh, he won last week at uh, Reynolds Plantation. Okay, yeah, Jordan, yeah. big collegiate yeah. event. So it's, you know, it's a where does he, where does he go to school? Alabama. Alabama so I thought, yeah. He's yeah. a freshman. Yeah. Alabama. Okay. Yeah. And he's doing really well. And, uh, he'll be out at the club, uh, during the North South this summer. And, you know, it's just a lifelong relationship that we have with these folks. Al Sutton stays in touch with us mm. and, you know, it's just an honor to, to be able to have a real relationship with these players at CCNC. It's interesting. I think it was last summer, uh, Chris Hill, who's our account manager with our state magazine, his brother came and played, uh, we played dogwood. Mm-hmm. And so he, his brother competed in the 1980 U S amateur. And I think Don, you took him downstairs to the locker room to show him the the picture and the composite of all the, I mean, Mark Kalkovecki had played in that and Fred num- Couples. Fred Couples. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and he was blown away uh, to be able to see that, that you guys still maintain that. I mean, again, it goes to the rich history of the club and how much you treasure those moments. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, we think about the U.S. Junior every week at CCNC and and we know we're making history in, in a couple of weeks here with the with the ACC championship. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just something very special to walk through those halls and see the autographs, see the pictures and remember that shot getting pitched in on mm. 16. <laughs> and it's just something special. What's it like behind the scenes? Cause you look at Pinehurst and Pine Needles that, that host these major championships that have the infrastructure you're, you know, I wouldn't say a small club, but I mean, a club that, you know, you depend on a lot of volunteers is there's a lot of heavy lifting there, not only with your superintendent, but you know, moving transportation fans, things like that. What's it like for you guys to host these championships like this and, and really pull it off and it's flawless. Well, you know, some people like, like Jeff, you know, they're great golfers. Uh, and, and, uh, for my team, it's, it's really about, pulling off the impossible sometimes with a championship and turning, uh, turning the club into a championship venue when it was a member venue the week before. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's exciting for us and to, to welcome people from all around the country and have it all work smoothly. That's, that's fun. It's, it's big fun. Um, but, uh, we work on a championship takes about two years of planning. It takes a lot of member support with, with folks that volunteer their time. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, uh, easy for us to get the volunteers because again, you know, they're giving back to the game that's given them so much. ACC championship. We've mentioned that a couple of times, mm-hmm. Jeff, uh, this podcast will drop on April the 11th. Uh, the tournament is the April 14th through the 16th, I believe. It's actually the, well, the 20th is a practice round. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the, championship itself is the uh 21st okay 24th gotcha i got it was a week off there so uh stand corrected but yeah the acc championship coming here uh jeff kowalski who who works with you guys from a pr standpoint i said hey give me some facts about the acc championship so obviously carolina is going to be a team to look at uh florida state he says georgia tech as well as virginia who are some of the players that you know if we want to come out and watch and is it freedom to the public and uh who should be be watching for i know austin greaser is, is a heck right. of a player so go ahead and, and tell us what to what to look for yeah well uh, for starters um it is open to the public uh, we're happy to have spectators and we we expect uh that there will be quite a few spectators we know there's a lot of acc alumni in the area and and obviously just a lot of golf fans that live yeah. locally but uh, 
Uh, I'm sure with this, the schools within North Carolina and Virginia is not that far away, Clemson, of course. Yeah. Uh, I, I would expect that we would get a, a pretty good uh, crowd of spectators. Uh, as far as the players, uh, you know, I'm just thinking of the kids who played in the Junior Am a couple of years ago. David Ford, who's a sophomore now at Carolina, he was the uh, freshman of the year last year, um, has had a great start to his career. Um uh, the kid from Florida State, uh, Luke Clanton from Florida, um, he, I think, made it to the quarterfinals, or actually the semifinals in the Junior Am, uh, and he's playing well at Florida State. Um, There's another gentleman, um, uh, Pete provided, Frederick, I cannot pronounce his last name, Ketterjup, Ketterup? Georgia Tech. Uh, Florida State? Florida State. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, <laughs> I have a list here. So he's that you mentioned David Ford, uh, Dylan Manante of North Carolina, right. uh, uh-huh. Ben James of Virginia, right. Christo Lamprecht, Ross Steelman of Georgia Tech, uh, Michael Brennan of Wake Forest, and the gentleman uh, Frederick, uh, last name K J E T T R U P yeah. from Florida State. So yeah, lots of great players. And uh, how did you guys get the? This is kind of a this is just a one season, one year deal, right? Uh, well, their plan is to run a rotation, right. a three or four year rotation. So if, you know, all goes well, I think that they'll go back to the beginning and, gotcha. okay. and, and do a rotation, which we like because, you know, we don't, we don't want to do the same thing every single right. year. Um, it, it gives us a break in between and gives us time to plan for the next thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh. I, how did we get it? So uh, <laughs> they called you, right? Well, the the uh, the initial Jeff made it happen, man. Uh, Jeff made it happen. <laughs> well, actually, the initial contact uh, was Press McFall, the coach at NC State, okay, um, who has very close ties to Southern Pines, um, and I've known Press a long time. He called one day. This was probably in 2018, maybe uh, 2019, and just asked if we would have any interest in it because you know the ACC had been at Old North State, right? You know, for years, uh, yeah, yeah, for about 20 years. And uh, I, I think you know from their standpoint, what they wanted to do was to um, spread it out more. With obviously the ACC footprint being from Boston College to Miami, mm-hmm. um, and ironically, Miami does not have a golf team, which surprised wow. me. Wow, I found I did I'm, not know that. I, that's, that is surprising. Yeah, but so uh, the, the idea again was to kind of spread the championship around, like they do in the other sports. And uh, um, so the first year uh, they were in Atlanta at Capital City Club. Uh, last year they were at Shark's Tooth at Panama City oh, yeah. Beach. This year at CCNC here in Pinehurst, and then next year they're going to be at Charlotte Country Club. You know, I don't know if that exact rotation is going to continue, but I'm I'm certain that you know they don't want to lock down in one specific spot. Yeah, that makes they, sense. Done before, so you move around. You got parents that want to follow their kids, and <laughs> right. and you know, loyalists to the teams that right. want to travel as well. Right. But yeah, it's great. It's in rotation. So now that now after the ACC championship, you said what's next? Prepare for what's next. What is it? A U.S. amateur is a junior amateur. What what what's next on the agenda for CCNC championship wise? Well, the. Uh, the two that we have locked in are the Southern Amateur and the Carolinas Amateur, and we're con- we're a permanent host, what you would call a permanent host of each of those championships. Mm-hmm. We'll have them on a rotating basis. Typically, every eight to ten years, we'll host either the Great. Carolinas Am or the Southern Am, and uh, we've got those in twenty six and twenty seven. Awesome. Talk about well, we've talked a lot about golf. Um, talk about you know what? When I was director of marketing at Sandestin, this was. You know, Eight ten years ago, we were like, "What's what's this pickleball thing?" <laughs> and, uh, so, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know, it's nothing." And uh, but it has blown up. You guys spent, I think, three hundred grand on a pickleball facility, maybe more. Well, but let's I mean, not talk about that part. <laughs> <laughs> remember dues? We got to increase your dues. But uh, oh. I know all about that. But um, but anyway, you got a spectacular pickleball facility. Um, talk about the improvements you guys have made. You know to the club outside of golf. I mean, from pickleball to the club renovations, uh, the arts uh, decor that you've done, we, which we assisted you with proudly. Uh, Dan Dreyer, Absolutely. Destination Storyteller, with some of the videos. In fact, I saw somebody at Red's Corner with a CCNC logo, and I mentioned, I said, you ever see those videos of the arts, um, the, the artists that have did the work there? And they said, we love those videos. I was like, yeah, Dan, our guy did those. Uh, yeah. But talk about some of the things that you guys have done to improve the club and the member experience. You know, we... we we uh, we focus on improving everything. We you know again we always want to do the right things right. Um, 
uh, we renovated the restaurant, uh, the main restaurant two years ago. And when we did that project, uh, we got to the part where we're fitting out the furniture and thinking about the walls and the artwork. And, and we really decided to focus on making that restaurant speak to North Carolina and, 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 the, and this area specifically. Uh, so everything from the colors in the rooms to the art on the wall uh, has some sort of local touch to mm -hmm. it. Um, so we tried to bring the outside in and we definitely uh, used only local artists. And there's just such amazing artwork in this town uh, that uh, we're just, we're, proud to showcase that but now, i think okay, you, you could probably remember some of the uh art of carmen drake uh Lorianne, uh owen uh, ben owen's uh, wife yeah. uh, sister with that there are some other tremendous artists there so we've got some massive pots from ben owen that uh you know i just don't know how a human being could make that it, it just <laughs> was fantastic and, and the drake painting uh you know the day we committed to buy that painting uh one of the national magazines named her the one of the top 10 artists to watch in the country. Mm. And so, you know, it's just really lucky that that happened and it's just such a great piece, but, uh, you know, we've gone from there. And, and like you said, we added pickleball. Uh, one of our members is Corinne Carr and she's a national champion pickleball player. Um, wow. and, uh, she, she was very active in helping us, uh, choose the design and we're right there on the lake. So you've, you know, it's, you've it's got a, a beautiful a, setting. You've got a great it's view. It's awesome. Uh, it's the we've Augusta got kind National of a, yeah. <laughs> it's the, it's the I tell you what, I know it's on ESPN, <laughs> ESPN, they've got a, a match. It'll, it'll be played by the time this podcast airs, but it's, I think it's, um, Chang and Agassi against Roddick and I forget who, oh, John McEnroe and, uh, but it's a pickleball championship. It's on ESPN. And uh, awesome. so it's pretty cool. And I've seen like flipping the channel, seeing like pickleball, there's like, you know, touring. I mean, that, that could be the next thing, you know, pickleball well, it, championships. It's a thing. Yeah. It's oh, it's a thing. For sure. Well, our members have, you know, <laughs> they've embraced there was it. A little, there was a, I, certainly a little uh, resistance at first because it was new. And yeah. Uh, but I tell you what, our members have embraced it. And they're on Saturdays, they're, they're waiting for a court. Uh, you know, we'll have to grow it at some point. But, uh, it's 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 really fantastic yeah. and beautiful beautiful venue. <clears throat> so you, do you get to play golf at all? Uh, do you get to play golf at all? I think he's talking uh, to you. once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I, every once in a while. I, I, you know, I'm a practicer. I'm a I'm a uh, someone who will putt for an hour and a half and be thrilled to death. Right. Or be out at the range. I love being out at the range, especially like by myself on the range. But, yeah. uh, I don't get to play as much as I like because, you know, we're always doing things at the club and we're always growing and um, hoping that I can play more now that uh, a lot of our projects have wound up. Yeah. The only time you're going to be by yourself on the range is at night. That's true. That's CCNC. <laughs> yeah. It's a um, busy range. So uh, just back to the ACC championship, if people do want to do, they just come straight to the club or are you going to have transportation into the club or how, how's well, that going to no, work? They, they uh, can just come to the club. We'll have them parked uh, in a specific location and then we'll shuttle them up to, uh, to the golf course from there. So. Awesome. Um, you know, mention too, if you have memberships available, if anybody wants to, uh, to look into that, I, I know it may not be, uh, your, your forte or, but how can people get in touch with the club or, or learn more? You know, uh, you can certainly reach out to us through the website. Um, CCNC for the first time since probably the eighties is sitting on a wait list right now. It's not very long, but we do we do have a wait list for memberships, um, but uh, you know we we really focus on folks that that see things, uh, see golf first, and um, definitely want to participate in things like the ACC Championship. And um, so, if you're one of those kind of folks, you should reach out to us through the website. And if you're coming down for the ACC Championship, obviously if you're local, uh, drive on out there. But if you're listening to this podcast and you're in Charlotte, Raleigh, winston Hellam, any of the ACC towns, uh, we look forward to welcoming you here. You guys are both residents and given this podcast uh, and we're the tourism entity for Moore County with the CVB. Uh, as residents here, if you have people coming to town for the ACC Championship, if they're not at the club watching the action, what would you recommend they do when, when they're in town for the weekend? It could be dining, whatever. Right. whatever what, do you, what do you guys like to do? What do you recommend? 
Well, if they're uh, if they're not playing golf, there's you know uh, you mentioned pottery. Um, a lot of people really enjoy going up to Seagrove yeah. and, uh, and about forty see. minutes. It's yeah. not very far. Yeah, it's not a bad drive. Nice day it's trip. A, well, it's a beautiful drive up through yeah, well, through that part of the county. Um, and uh, you mentioned dining. Um, you know both Pinehurst and Southern Pines and Aberdeen now. Um, who's yeah? They've done such a great job. They uh, really have revitalizing their downtown. Uh, but there's so many cool little shops and restaurants um you know you can you can spend all day walking around uh uh downtown southern pines for mm-hmm. sure yeah Don, you know, what about you you know I, li- I like the new food truck area in southern yeah red's pines. corner i think, yeah. I think red's that is great. fantastic yeah. and there's always tons of energy and you can meet lots of locals there it's it's, it's a great place uh, to take kids great place no question and, yeah you know and i've if, seen some of your members you there. want pizza and somebody else <laughs> yeah. wants uh tacos yeah and, you don't have to go to, two, you know, it's just all right the, there. The cookie truck yeah, ain't bad yeah, either. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that's great. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Southern Pines and driving out in the horse country and yeah. going to Weymouth and those sort of things are fantastic. Well, guys, you got me wanting to go play golf at CCNC for <laughs> sure. Um, we get occasion to go over there from time to time. So we appreciate your hospitality. Your staff is uh, not just the golf staff, but your your uh, club staff is, is outstanding. Nick Gray is the assistant GM now. So, uh, you know, we appreciate his uh, partnership as well. So, again, uh, congratulations on the uh, new rankings with the North Carolina State Golf Panel. Uh, Dogwood, number three in the state. And Cardinal, now number 13 in the state. Very so, good. Don Hunter, the Chief Operating Officer, and Jeff Dodson, the Director of Golf from the Country Club of North Carolina, thank you for joining us at Paradise in the Pines. Thanks, Don. You want to know more about this podcast, you can go to homogolf.com on our homepage. We can link right up to the podcast. You can go to our YouTube channel, which is Home of American Golf. You can see this podcast. And if you'd like to download podcasts, just search Paradise in the Pines. This has been Paradise in the Pines, and we'll see you next time. Awesome.